Welcome, new friends and old friends. It's Dawn with For Grace Creations. How is everybody doing today? I hope you are doing well. If not, let me know in the comments if you want me to be praying for you. You could simply say, prayer warrior. Also, I'm going to leave my email down in the description box. You could also shoot me an email. I would love to be your behind-the-scenes prayer warrior. Also, I have a couple of um, people that have asked me some questions about the gel plate, and I need to be honest, I am not uh, a gel plate guru. Uh, the things I know I've learned from other people or by experience. So I wanted to answer a couple of questions today. And before I do, you know how usually we start with a Bible verse? Well, we're not doing that today, and here's why. I would love for you, in the comments, to simply put in a Bible verse. It could be your favorite verse. It could be one that you read today. Anything. And if you would like to put your verse and then just a little... Uh, something in there, you know, uh, uh, some details, whatever you want. It is your turn today. You give me a Bible verse of the day. So let's start first. I had the question, how do you store your gel plates? And then I had the question of how do you condition your gel plates, clean your gel plates, and how often? So those are the questions I'm going to answer today. So before I could do that, I had to do some playing. And look at this. I got an Amazon package and I'm using it as my brayer off sheet because I thought it would be fun just to give it some, you know, this is how it looked. Very boring. Give it some fun before I use it to send a package off to somebody. But I had to get some stuff some on my gel plate because when I put it away the last time I did clean it. Uh, now, for cleaning, when you're done, you can either leave all of the stuff on your gel plate, that's fine, or you can take it to the sink and just use some warm or even cool water with a little bit of dish soap and gently just, you know, rub it. And you can wash it that way. Or if you don't want to do that, here's a way you can clean it. Baby wipes. I'm just going to pull a few out. You can grab a wet baby wipe. Let's try this smaller one. I have a horrible glare and I'm sorry. But you can just do like this and wipe it clean. But that is only if you don't have a bunch of stuff on there. What I mean is, you know, like built up paint on there. And yeah, you just simply wipe it away. Now let's take a look at that. Eh, it's not too bad. But if that doesn't cut it and you need to really clean it and you know, you want to use it. You know what? You can condition it. Check this out. Baby oil. Uh, you can get it at the Dollar Tree. You can use mineral oil. It's just more expensive. However, know this. Different oils have different smells, so it really is your own preference. I like the smell of baby oil. Uh, it just makes me think of the babies, the grandbabies, my babies. So, if you have a plate that is being stubborn when trying to clean it, just squirt some baby oil on there. And what you're doing is you're conditioning your plate and cleaning it. Technically, conditioning your plate, how often do you need to do that? Well, I would say that again is typically, I have found my personal preference because there are times where I'm not pulling paint or paper's getting stuck. And you know what I do? Instead of fighting it, I just condition my plate. And see what I'm doing? I'm just rubbing it in. Not too hard. You don't have to rub too hard. But I can feel this leftover paint coming off. Oh, look, that black came off. And then I kind of rub the edges a little bit because paint does build up on those edges. 
and this is cleaning and conditioning at the same time. Now look, oh, ah, yes, I've been playing. But if you don't like greasy hands, you're gonna need to wear gloves, but I don't mind it. Then take your baby wipe and just gently rub it like that and you're getting off that paint that was stubborn. I'm gonna do kind of the edges as well. And you've conditioned your plate and cleaned it at the same time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that baby wipe and come in with a new one because it will just get a little of the residue, uh, leftover paint, that kind of thing off and we'll get it really clean. Now, if you're specifically conditioning your plate, my personal preference is to clean it first, whether not under the soapy water, I mean, you can, and then just pat it dry with a paper towel. Don't like rub it really well. But once you have all the paint off of your plate, then squirt your baby oil on there, rub it in and let it sit for a while. How long? I don't know, maybe five to 10 minutes. And, and then come and take a uh, piece of paper and put it on there and kind of rub and pull. And, or you could even use deli paper and just, just put it on there and kind of do like this. Because what you're doing is you're actually just getting the excess baby oil off. You see, because you don't want a bunch of residue on there. And then, how, how do I store this plate once it's, you know, I'm done playing for the day? Well, this little one here, it actually came in this, I think they call it a clamshell. So what I do is I take printer paper. Any printer paper will work. And I cut it down to my plate size. And what I do is I just put the paper on top and I kind of do like this to rub any air bubbles out, pull it off, and then I can see, is there air bubbles? If there are, just press them out. And then I use another piece of paper, put it on top and press the air bubbles out and then I just put it back in my clamshell. And that's how I store this one. Now, I do make sure to store it like this, not upright. And don't, and it does need to be level and flat. Don't store anything on top of it. I want to show you actually why. Let's put this in here and close it. I'm not done playing for the day, but I thought I'd show you. We now have a clean conditioned plate. Oh, I didn't do the other side because... I already did that the last time I was playing, but this is clean, conditioned, and ready to store flat. So I'm going to set that aside. And then this one here, uh, I actually made the mistake because I didn't know any better. I actually had that clamshell and the papers that come in it, you know, uh, it tells what it is and instructions and things. When I was done the first time, I actually just put my gel plate right back in that clamshell with the papers that it came with. I just plopped it in there and put it away. Here's what happened. I didn't make sure all the air bubbles were out. Um, I didn't make sure that it was, you know, completely flat. And now what happens is I have an indentation here, almost like a thumbprint pushed down in there. And on the other side, I actually have a divot line and that is showing up in every single print that I do. Now I do need, um, I do need a piece of plexiglass or something to place this on when I'm working, but I don't have that. So I just use my deli paper. Not that I need to protect my counter because my counter is just the cheap Formica stuff and Acrylic paint actually will come off of this with regular soap and water or a baby wipe. So I just put my plate down like that and give it some pats. Now this one I know is conditioned well. How do I know? Because it has a little bit of stickiness, not like gum, uh, but it gives a tiny bit of resist. That's how I know I don't need to condition it right now but I wanted to cover that again. 
Do you see this built up? It actually came off of a stencil that I don't clean. Let me see if I have it sitting here. Uh, da -da -da -da. All right, I do. It's, I'll just show you this paper. It's by PM Artist Studio. And the person that, the artist that made it is Eddie at Eddie Makes Art. It's called Diamond Ring Stencil Number 2, 8 by 10. But look at my stencil. It has layer upon layer of paint. That side, mm, also, whatever. It's okay. If you want to clean these with soap and water every time you're done, by all means, go ahead. Just be careful because if you're not extremely gentle, you will break these things. So I don't clean them and I don't mind. But what happens is occasionally you will get leftover paint off of that stencil. So if you don't want it, again, you just come in with your baby wipe and see if it'll come off. And mine does. You also could just leave it and let it come up randomly on another print. But maybe you don't want that. Now, the thing to pay attention to is see all these pieces of... Oh, you can't see it. The pieces, little tiny pieces of paint come off. They are chunky. What I mean is they will get on your brayer and leave little uh, funny marks when you're brayering out your your next piece. So you wanna make sure you get those little chunks off. Now, I can tell that this is cleaning my plate. So I don't need to condition it. But again, if I start noticing that my prints are not pulling well, and I start noticing that maybe the paper that I'm pulling with is sticking to my plate, it's time to condition it. You can, I do not think that you can condition these too much. I could condition it now, condition it when I'm done. It's not gonna hurt it at all. So don't be afraid of that. And again, we just, I'll just do it, why not? I squirt some of that on and it, I don't really care how much I use because this baby oil is really inexpensive. And then I do have chunks of paint you're like, Dawn, how can you tell? You have paint everywhere. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, woo! <laughs> oh, yeah, and we have a dinner date later tonight. Anyway, I'm just going to kind of rub it on there. Now, what's funny is when I do this, I can actually feel the divots in this because I was unaware how to properly store this. And I will tell you, I have used this enough that, ladies and gentlemen, it is not going to go back. Like I have sat here and really kind of put pressure and moved this plate around. I've let this, this sit in top and bottom in baby oil for an hour and then come and kind of mushed it around. I need a new jelly plate. Why have I not gotten another one? Well, because right now there is no play money set aside. We... Um, I don't know about you guys, but we have uh, a budget and certain times there is a budget for play money. Well, I may have spent that and I am sticking to that budget. Eventually, I will get another 8 by 10 It just might be a while because also I always forget that I need a new one. So see... We have conditioned this plate. Now, I do have oil all over my counter, all over my hands. Not a big deal. I could set this aside and, you know, let, like, okay, maybe we're going to go ahead and use the oil on this side, on the other side. And just see how I'm mushing it around. Yeah, that's totally all I do, you guys. Squishy mushy. I mean, it's, if you're not afraid of making an oily mess, there we are. So the plate is squishy mushy. Now I can tell you that this plate is no longer totally clear and see-through and the reason, because I use it. it. Don't worry if your plate, say you got a brand new plate and you play with it a while and then you go and 
you clean it and condition it and it's kind of yellowed, it's okay. It still works great. Don't worry about that. Also, some of the things, like if you use anything other than acrylic paint on this, it might stain it, which again, who cares? We can still play. I'm gonna wipe that off the counter. Now I'm going to grab a paper towel and I'm just gonna lay that down here and plop that on. I noticed that some of my paint is coming off, the paint that's on my hands is coming off on here. So I am gonna go ahead and get some of the paint off my hands just because it's getting kind of chunky. And then what I'll do to get the excess oil off is like this. Now, if you're new to jelly plating and jelly printing, there are people out there that that's all they do. So you can learn a lot from them. Uh, PM Artist Studio is one that you will learn a ton and they're fun. So I will link them in the description box below. But another is Eddie Makes Art. We have, oh, Darcy at Darcy's Misadventures with Mixed Media. She does some jelly plating. Carrie with Carrie the Crafter, he does some jelly plate printing. And, oh, Devin Rex for Art. She is another one. And then Froil. I don't know. I'm going to try and link all these people. Oh, I have to try and remember that. But they are actually artists. They This is what they do. It is, they're, they're very good to follow and learn from. But don't be afraid to ask questions in the comments below. I will always try and answer them. And if I can't, I'll be honest. And then I will search for the answer for you, or I'll point you in the direction to go. So I think this side of the plate is good to go. So we're just gonna, oh, I'll plop it this way. And I do wanna make sure all the air bubbles are out of it because I don't need a plate that's even worse. So I'll just rub it like that. Okay, yeah, underneath the air bubbles are out and I'm just getting any extra oil off with this because now dun, 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 we can play some more. Boy, I've got a, a pile of mess over here. Hee <laughs> hee. So let's see what we can do really quick. I have, oh, what paper do I use to pull prints? Well, all different paper, book page, uh, Ugh, packaging paper, uh, music note paper, piano, you know, sheet music, uh, Amazon packaging. You can use anything, but if I want a good white print, I go and get this. It is um, color laser and copier paper. It is 98 bright, 32 pound and it comes with 500 sheets, and it is USA letter size. I get it at Staples, but you can get it online. It's just, um, it's just white copy paper that is 32 pound. That's the key. I have found that 32 pound works the best. So let's try a print, and then we'll be done, because I think I answered storage, cleaning, and conditioning. I'm, I'm fairly certain I did that part. I don't know. I can't remember if there's any other questions. Oh, no. But I do want to show you. Dun, 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 dun. If you happen to go to PM Artist Studio, there is an 8 by 10 floral filigree by Sophia Button. This is what it looks like. But then if we look at it this way, there, there it is. Okay. But I do want to show you, you have another option. 
There is the exact same stencil in five by seven. See? But what does that look like? There you go. So do you see the difference? This one happens to be the same print, but this is actually done smaller. Like these little lines are skinnier. The, the print, if you will, is smaller. It's shrunk down, see? Not all of them are like that, so you do have to kind of pay attention. Some of them, it might be just taking this exact stencil and making it smaller. But this one, this is kind of daintier. You see what I'm saying? But they do offer it in the both in the two sizes. I got this little this little one as a happy mail. It's so so sweet. Thank you, thank you. By the way, I adore it. And I'm thinking, let's. I'm trying to put this away real quick. I'm thinking, let's go ahead and try this one. And what color should we do? How about, oh boy, um, I don't do a lot of red. Should we do some red? Why not? Let's try it. That's way too much paint, I think. Oh, you know what? Oh, hold on. Let's play. Let's do that red, which by the way was... Um, carmine red, and this is black. Which black you say? This is lamp black. Both of them Amsterdam. And let's just mix these colors a little bit and get just something a little wonky, something fun, instead of the one color. All right. And then I've got the brayer and I'm going to spread out my paint. That is a lot of paint, but I'm not too worried. We're gonna get some of it off over here. Okay, that'll do. And then I'm gonna place the stencil on top like that. Let's get a plain white piece of paper and let's put that on top. Again, this is the 32 pound. I'm gonna use my Baron and rub it. Now the top of my Baron is flat, it's flush. I need a second one, I realized that. I need one where this piece here is sticking up a little bit so that when I'm working with a stencil, I can then turn it around and do like this and it'll get down in the stencil. So I'm actually gonna use pressure here and here to attempt to get down in those little grooves. I know the noise, I've got some labs here enjoying their Playtime. Oh, look. Fabulous. I love that. So I'm going to let that dry. But then we're going to take another white piece of paper and try and do a flop off. Let me show you what a flop off is. You take this off, immediately place it down here. Come over it with your brayer and see what happens. You never know. Every time it's going to be different. Nothing happened, so the paint dried. So over here, I'm wondering if the paint has already dried too much to pull it. My guess is, yeah. So let's just leave that to thoroughly dry. But I do want to show you something. Do you see the edges there? It pulled off paint from that stencil. And I am totally okay with that because 
I think we're going to get some cool colors. So how long does this take to dry? Well, different colors dry differently. Blue dries the fastest. But you'll know because you won't see a shine like that. Do you see that? I'm sure, oh yeah, you, you can see that. That big bloop right there. That's where that thumbprint divot is down in there. And when I go to pull a print, it is very obvious I have that problem because everything pulls except that spot. I am left with that. So yes, I need a new, I need a new one. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So that is all for today, you guys. I'm gonna let this thoroughly dry and I probably will come back Oh, maybe later tonight and pull it with something, but I'm going to take a break. So hopefully that answered your quit Listen to me. Not enough coffee this morning. Hopefully that answered your questions, Kristen. And if any of you have any other questions, go ahead and let me know. We'll see you later. Bye.